Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, thanks again for listening in to Growing in Grace. It's just me, Joel Brzezinski, and Mike Kapler getting together, just the two of us, and of course, however many millions and millions of people are listening in as well. As uh, you know, we have millions of downloads every week here, Cap. <laughs> just the two of us. <laughs> millions of bites, that is. We can, we Probably can not. make it if we don't try, as, <laughs> yeah, as the don't song try. says. Stop trying. Just the two of us. <laughs> you and I. All right. That's right. We're thankful that you've taken some time to listen in on this conversation that the two of us are having. And yeah, we don't have millions of people out there. There's probably, you know, if you take gigabytes and megabytes and break it down into bytes, there's millions of bytes that are downloaded every week, but that's about it. Uh, but we do thank you because, you know, our goal here, uh, I don't know, we don't really have a goal. I guess it's just, well, it is. We to lift up Jesus Christ <laughs> to, and to proclaim the good news, and uh, hopefully... It's doing something for you. You know, we hear from people, I don't remember when this was, a week or two or three ago. I get these things all confused, but I was mentioning some people who share uh, this podcast on YouTube. And I just wanted to also mention, too, we hear some, from various people via email, and some people who have who have emailed us a few different times, uh, Chris, Sandra, and then, uh, I don't, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but uh, our friend from Hungary, Imre? <laughs> Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, but uh, we love hearing from people. If you just email us once or if you email us a bunch of times, it's awesome, and we love hearing from you. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, just drop in on our conversation here anytime. We post these every week, growingandgrace.org. As Joel said, YouTube and some other sources are available as well, but you'll find all the past podcasts there at growingandgrace.org. It's, it's kind of like here, here's how you'll enjoy the podcast just a little bit more. Pretend you're eavesdropping on us, and we don't know you're listening. <laughs> you're a People fly on the wall. People love to do that stuff, man. I mean, you have to picture yourself in it. At least if you're eavesdropping on my wall, it's a basement. I got a wooden wall, wooden panels. Anyway, just do what you need to do to get yourself thinking that you're eavesdropping on us <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's people like to do that stuff i'm not very good at it joel i, I can have somebody looking at me right in the face and i'm not hearing a word they're saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i know i know what you mean oh yeah and, and all the while i can be shaking my head mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. yes dear uh-huh mm-hmm. <laughs> i wasn't gonna relate it to uh, that <laughs> why does my wife always talk to me when i'm got my mind on something else you know <laughs> trying to listen to that news guy on the tv Women, you've got to know, we men can only listen to one thing at a time. It's, it's just what we're built for. Single-minded, single-focused. That's right. That's all we can do. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Enough of this joking around, um, which is kind of serious because everything I said was the truth. But um, let's move on, Joel. We've been talking a lot about, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, we, we've delved into some of, of Adam and Eve and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life those kinds of things. but So let's just stretch this theme a little bit further and, and focus on the fact, and uh, we touched on some of this probably recently, but the, the fact that Adam and Eve were challenged in their identity. And then there was another Adam that came along a little bit later on. We know him as Jesus Christ. And he was also challenged in his identity. So let's tie all of this together. Oh, were, were you saying something? I had my mind somewhere else. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, it's true. Adam and Eve, I, I love the talk that we've been doing about Adam and Eve and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and how sometimes in the church today, well, a lot of times, we're doing exactly the same things uh, that Adam and Eve did by trying to relate to God with the knowledge of good and evil, pursuing that rather than simply pursuing him and resting in him and, and, and pursuing life, which is Jesus Christ himself. And as we talk about all this, it does bring to mind this the whole thing that Adam and Eve, when this whole thing happened, you know, back in Genesis 3, they were challenged by, you know, what 
Genesis calls the serpent. You know, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field but which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And he goes on to tempt and to question, to get Eve and eventually Adam to question if what God said was really real. And in a way, what the serpent was doing was getting them to question their identity. See, they were created, and they were placed in the garden, and they had a solid identity in Jesus Christ, made in the image of God. That's how they were made. That's how God made them. And they had everything that they needed. They had life. God even told them they could eat of any tree in the garden, but just not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And hey, look at this tree here, the tree of life. How wonderful this tree of life is. Uh, But they began to question that because the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. And so we get to, of course, Jesus Christ went just before his ministry began, or as it was beginning, and uh, he was also tempted by the cunning one, you know, by the devil. He was tempted, his identity was questioned. And so we see a difference here. We see something changing here. The, The first Adam gave in to the temptation. But Cap, uh, of course, the the last Adam, Jesus Christ, uh, something else happened with him. Yeah, as he was getting ready to enter the the public ministry domain, if you will, he was out in the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. And really, we we read these scriptures so quickly, Joel, because sometimes they're they're not always that detailed. I mean, the truth is he was out there for 40 days. Hmm. How, How big would that book be? if we knew of everything that went on. And so it's, sometimes it's just easy to assume certain things that are, may or may not really be there. But 40 days, and we just have a real small excerpt of, of what occurred, uh, a few instances where the devil came to him and said, all right, if, if you, you really are the Son of God, do something to prove it. And so then he tempted him with a few different things to, to do. You know, go up here and jump off, turn these stones into bread, and, and Jesus deflected each one, and how many there were during that 40 days, or whether it was all temptation, or you know, I don't know what all occurred, or how, how often the, the devil was there to, to uh, try to entice him. But, but the point is, I think that the whole basis of the temptation was on the identity that Jesus had as the Son of God, similar to what occurred back in the garden with Adam and Eve, and their identity as being already like God, because that was the, what the temptation was centered around. Remember that, that uh, the devil said, you'll, you'll eat that stuff and you'll become like God, not realizing that they'd already been created in his image and were well protected from that nasty thing called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But, but Jesus won out in the desert. And um, I think some things that are hard for us to imagine, Joel, are hard to, to understand and grasp is the fact that although Jesus was God, he was born a baby, Mm -hmm. and he grew as a boy and as a teenager and into a man. And I believe the Bible says something like he he grew in, I don't know if it was knowledge and wisdom or stature and and, and Wisdom and stature, yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, wisdom and stature, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there was was a, a development there as a human being. And somewhere along the way, either by revelation or perhaps by people like Mary or Joseph, the scriptures or a combination thereof, he became aware of who he was. The, the truly, as a man, he was the anointed one. He was the Messiah. He was the Son of God. And sometimes we think of that term as a deity, and it is, but he was also the Son of Man. And so, uh, with those things in mind, this temptation that occurred out in the wilderness with the devil was really kind of a big deal because he was human. And so he, like the rest of us, the Bible does say he was tempted like we were, yet without sin. I think this was a big thing, though, for him to understand that he truly was the beloved Son of God, the Messiah, the the one to whom would, with his sacrifice, redeem all of mankind. Yeah, that's right. And he was the Son of God, and he was the Son of Man. We can't take any of that, we can't set any of that aside, because it was all so important, you know, from a from his uh, human lineage, you know, he he did descend from Adam, and you can read the lineages in in uh, in the New Testament in the, in the 
the gospels, as they call them. But the thing here is that, um, you know, Jesus, you, you mentioned that, you know, maybe he had revelation from Mary and Joseph, maybe through the scriptures. And of course, Jesus did know the scriptures very well. And Mary and Joseph would have as well. And so he would have been taught and he would have learned and he would have grown. He would have understood and come to see who he was. And, and by the time this temptation came in the wilderness, you know, I like, you know, some of the things that Jesus said. You know, he said, get behind me, Satan. Uh, it's in uh, Luke 4, 8. You know, that's something that Adam and Eve didn't say. I don't think they realized, really, what was going on. And you place one of us in their shoes, we probably would have done the same thing. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. And mm-hmm. so you know, Jesus knew the scriptures, and he used his knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. But it wasn't just a, it wasn't just a knowledge of the scriptures. It wasn't just a, oh, I understand what the scriptures say. But he understood what the scriptures said because they spoke of him. They, they, it was about him and his identity, who he was and that God was his Father, and that all of these things are true about him, and, he, and it was personal to him. And that's the thing uh, that, that helped Jesus in these things, because he knew that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You shall worship the Lord your God, in him only you shall serve. You sh- and then uh, when when the devil tried to tempt, tempt him, he said, It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. All of these things Jesus knew uh, because of the scriptures and because it had been confirmed to him in one way or another uh, by the Holy Spirit and, and through other people. And so the point is, in all of this, Adam and Eve, for whatever reason, they gave in to the temptation. And the and sin entered the world, it says, and death through sin. But something else happened, and, and uh, we got about a minute left here, but so we'll have to pick up on some of this next week, but something very different happened when Jesus obeyed, and, and when Jesus didn't give into the, into the temptation. Life came, reconciliation came, and justification came, and there's a whole bunch of uh, scriptures that we could talk about in regards to that, but it's, it's really wonderful to contrast Uh, to see what happened here uh, between what happened with Adam and what happened with Jesus. Yeah, and I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into what we're going to get into next week. But the the bottom line here is Jesus understood who he was. And we have that same battle of identity to win uh, in this life, just coming to the understanding of who we are in him. Because Jesus didn't give in to the temptation, even when the devil would use Scripture to try to convince Jesus to do the wrong thing. Jesus came back at him, like you said, Joel. And it's not so much that, um, like when, when, if you really are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. There was no commandment telling Jesus not to turn stones into bread. But when we start to do things and try to tie that into our identity to prove who we are, then we have missed the mark. So looking forward to talking with you again next week. And we'll come into more about the results of what occurred from all of this right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.